Hey everybody, welcome to Christical Artistry. Um, before I get to tonight's pour, I just want to say hello to all my subscribers. Any new subscribers, I do apologize if I have missed your names along the way. Welcome, glad you are with me, um, and hope you're enjoying my videos. So before I begin tonight's pour, I had a couple of um, questions about some of the um, items that I use, not just necessarily with my pouring, but um, to help me get um, through the pouring, I guess I'm gonna say. So let me go over a few things. First, we have um, an important tool, our torches. Our torches are used to pop the bowls when you pour on both your flood color and your, um, your uh, pour colors. Um, if you've sh even if you've shaken them and let them sit, sometimes they have bubbles. So you'll wanna have a, a nice good torch to torch the bubbles before you begin. The reason for torching the bubbles is so that when the painting dries, it doesn't have um, missing spots. Um, those of you that bake cakes, you know that when before you put a cake in the oven, you need to tap it on the counter to bring the bubbles to the surface. Same thing. Um, you wanna get rid of those bubbles on your canvas so that it doesn't leave white spots. Okay, um, another thing of course is your um, popsicle sticks. I use skewers. Uh, these are just barbecue skewers. I buy them at my local Walmart, Target, Cub Foods, uh, Aldi, any of those. hy -Vee. Um I get the popsicle sticks in like 300 or more um, at my cr local craft stores. I think Walmart sells them too. Tongue depressors you can get at your um, uh, Home Depot, Menards, those type of places. And then I have purchased a bunch of these um, metal straws and I use metal straws for my drinks. So I bought a bunch of packages of these in different, um, if you notice there's straights, short, tall, and then the bent ones. And I use those when I want to blow things out by, um, by mouth because um, sometimes you don't want the hair dryer in there and you just want to add some delicate details. I use these. Um, next thing, and I talk about them a lot, is my hair dryers. I have three, well actually I have more than three, but three that I use. I have a brand new Conair 1875. This one is really powerful, so I do save it for larger paintings. Um, when I use that one, I used my largest attachment. My attachments are made by my husband on a 3D printer. This is the largest one that I have and it does fit um, the new Conair and it does fit my um, Revlon. My Revlon is, if you've been watching my videos, is my favorite. It has, um, it fits many of these attachments. It has a high-low and it also has this button here that is actually a cool button, but it gives the it extra power. So instead of flying paint all over using it on high, I just use it on low with the, with the power button, is what I call it. Then I also have my Hotshot, and my Hotshot was my original dryer. I got this at the Goodwill, and it too has um, a high-low. It also has um, a high, medium, and low heat. Of course, I use low, but the problem with this one is, is that my cool button has broken on this one. So I don't use this one as often as I did before, but again, if you're looking for a hair dryer <clears throat> and you're not sure if you're going to stay you know doing pour painting go to the goodwill and grab one they're you know a few bucks and um they'll they should last for quite a while okay so those are my hair dryers then i also have my attachments so you saw the attachments that are already attached to the dryer but my husband makes me attachments so he has made these are my newest ones so i'll be using these in upcoming videos so I like to have different sizes. Um, these round ones are a little bit wider than these, than these ones are, but these are a little bit more lengthy. So when you think about when you're blowing on the canvas, um, for a smaller canvas, you ne wouldn't necessarily want to use a, a nice wide um, nozzle because basically you would end up with maybe three petals. So um, think about the size canvas you're using, the dryer you're gonna use, and then which nozzle. So those are those. Um, he's also made me some crazy ones. I have a lot more, but this is the one that I was using all the time. 
but it's gotten so hot now and if you notice it's more flared out now and warped I do use it um, every once in a while but now that I have the new one I use that more often I asked for a really narrow one and this is what I got and it does work if you want to um, blow something out that's um, you know you just want to blow like a line out a little bit more this would be a good one for that um, I can't see my other ones but I have some really crazy nozzles and you can look back in my videos and you'll see them some blow like different directions or this way different directions or all over the place um, but nozzles are very important to me to mix my paint the most important thing is to have a scale um, I mix my paint by grams and so this scale actually changes from um, ounces to grams I use grams I use 80 grams of Floetrol 40 grams of my paint and 30 grams of water now with that in mind, different paints um, will mix differently. So if you've noticed on some of my uh, color shot paintings or um, videos recently, I had to add additional water to the color shots because the color shot paints, um, I don't know what exactly is in them, but they tend to dry faster and um, after sitting in the, in the bottles, which I've had bottles sit for, you know, six months and not have a problem. Um, they thickened up, so I do use a little bit more water with them. So it'd be more like 80, 40, 40 with those. So instead of 30 water, it'd be 40. The next thing that I absolutely love is my um, label printer. And I forgot which one this is. Oh, this is the Brother label printer. And my husband picked this up for me um, several months ago. And this is just the font in the design that I've chosen for my bottles, but this thing has tons of different varieties. And I also just use white on black labels, um, or black on white labels. And they come in cartridges, you just pop them in, they, you print out what you need, you can print as many of them as you want, um, and then it just has this little cutter on the end. And then I take a scissors and cut out, because I do border my, um, my labels. They have this cute little floral border on them, but I like that. So this is really important to me as well. Um, a couple other things that are really important. My camera, of course, and my camera is not an expensive camera. It's one that I picked up at Best Buy. Um, I have, I also picked up my microphone, which is right here. And this is a Bauer microphone. This Bauer microphone, I also had to purchase this stand for it. Um, so there are some pieces of equipment that are necessary that you'll need to purchase. And another thing that I absolutely love, sorry, hang on a minute, is I purchased this um, Bauer, what's it called? I, I bought it in a kit. So it comes with the tripod and then it has this um, auto like shoot function. So I have hooked this up to my phone and when I do my, my thumbnails at the beginning, I just set everything up. I have this over here with me. I click the button, takes the picture on my phone. I email those pictures to my computer um, email and then I pick which um, thumbnail I'm gonna use for which video. So I think that's everything besides the normal things, your canvases, your push pins, your tape, your paint, your glosses, um, paint brushes. I also, if you've seen recent videos, I also purchased um, some paint markers. Um, haven't used them much. I did a little bit of embellishing on a few paintings with them. These happen to be color shot. I do have a whole set of uh, Sharpies. I think they're paint Sharpie markers. I think they're Sharpie. I'm not sure. Don't quote me on that. But um, they're very handy and the only other thing that I really like that I have um, is my cart over here which you've probably seen in my videos and these little um, holders these holders snap onto this cart and there are separator ones there's I've got like four of these and then a separator one that I keep on my brushes and all my straws and all my um, my uh, this stuff in <laughs> my skewers and things. So
So they're all over here on my cart as well. And the cart is handy because it has three layers and I have all my paints on top and on the second and then I have all my accessories, you might say, on the bottom. Um, my tape, my funnels, my um, strainer, because I do strain my Floetrol before I put it in my bottles because Floetrol does get uh, lumps in it. So when you're mixing your paint, make sure that you use a strainer. In, and I use a strainer and a funnel together. And that way, um, when I'm putting my Floetrol in, it's not only straining, but I have a funnel so that I'm not spilling it all over the place. So thank you for the questions. I hope that answered all your questions. If not, let me know and we'll talk about some more. So again tonight, we are going to be working on a 12 by 16, I believe. Yep, uh, 16 by 12. And I'm running this one horizontally tonight. And my color palette is going to be um, blue, purple, magenta, rose gold, and another um, hue of, of magenta. We're going to also use black and white. We're not going to split the canvas, but black is going to be an accent color in this painting. So I'm going to go ahead and flood the canvas with white, and then I'll bring you down, and I'll be right back. So we have our 16 by 12 inch canvas um, flooded with white uh, paint. I use Blick Acrylic with Floetrol and water, and I just um, I use these old um, Artist Loft bottles to store it in. All right, and now we're going to pop the bubbles. Now when I was pouring this, I um, noticed a big glob right here. So I did take that out, add some more paint. This I just had a bare spot we're gonna fix. And that looks good. All right, so again, my color palette for tonight is going to start out with my Master's Touch Paints Gray. My Liquitex Basics Dioxinine Purple. I don't know if I had that up high enough for you to see. All right. Then I'm going to add in my Master's Touch Rouge. Now this is a new color for me. I just got this color. And I, when I looked at this color scheme, this was the color. I had um, Dark Magenta and I took it out and I want to use this Rouge because I believe it's going to look really nice with this Extreme Sheen uh, Rose Gold. I think they look really nice together. So that's why I'm going to use it. And then I'm going to use um, my Liquitex Basics Medium Magenta. So I took out the dark and put in the rouge, and we're going to use the medium. And then again, I have um, uh, Artist Loft Black that's mixed with Floetrol and water in the small bottle. And this is going to be just a, a drizzle and an accent in there. All right, let's get started. So for those of you who watch my videos, I'm sure you saw my, my last video with uh, my painting with my granddaughter. If you're new to my channel, please check out my uh, last video. Uh, I believe it's 119 or something, 19 or 20, I don't remember. Um, but I was painting for the first time with my granddaughter Jacqueline and she had a lot of fun. So just go check it out. All right, here's our Payne's Gray. And I'm just going to do a, a regular Dutch pour because um, starting with my next video, I'm going to be doing a series of five paintings. And it is going to be a series. We're going to start out with a really small canvas and we'll work our way up to a 16 by 20. So keep an eye out for that. But I wanted to start um, this by just doing a regular Dutch pour because we're going to do some different types of... Uh, um, pour painting on those other ones. Oh, we had a glob in there. Gotta watch out for those globs. So, when we check this, if I do feel or see something like right there and right there, 
two little blobs of paint. We've got to get those out of there. Okay, dioxanine purple. Love these colors. Love this color palette. Okay, we got. Whoop, see that? That had a glob in it. I have to check these. Now, the rouge shouldn't, it's brand new, so it shouldn't have anything. Oh my goodness, this blue, and I know you guys can't see it, but the purple in the blue is just like lighting it up. Okay, now I'm going to put the rose gold in, but I'm not going to use a lot, just enough to see if I can create a little bit of cell action. If not, then that's fine, because um, I originally wasn't going to put any metallics in, but you know me in metallics. I love my metallics. And then I'm going to add black, because I just like black as an accent. So not very much, as you saw, but I think it will um, do us some good. So here we go. Let's get the paint out of the way. Pop the bubbles. Now I'm turning my head sideways so I can check for the globs that I saw. And I do see the light here. Where did I see it? I thought I saw. Yep, right there. I can feel it. Paints will do that when they sit, um, and I haven't used this paint's gray. I used um, my Liquitex Basics paint's gray last, so my paint's gray and my dioxanine must have been sitting there a while. But So I can see this is going to be, there's going to be some cells in here. I can see some action going on already, so this is going to be really interesting. All right, let's blow it out. The rouge is so pretty in here with the other colors. I love what happened in here, the little swirls. And there's so much stuff popping up in here. There's a little bubble there I don't like. But you'll get every once in a while. Oh, I see a little glob here. A little sticky glob. Okay, got that. 
Oh, it's so pretty. This is just like a really interesting combination. And you know what? Now that I'm looking at it, the rose gold is fine, but I could have done without it. it. It looks beautiful without it too. So cool. This is really neat. I love this little section here where the black is. I'm gonna torch this. Let's see what else will come up. I still feel like there is a glob right here. Maybe it just needs some purple paint put back in there. Oh, well, that's pretty. Made like a little flower. All right, I'm going to. Um, I want this flared out a little bit more. I don't like that it looks so gray, um, and I feel like it just needs to go out a little bit more. This is gorgeous. And this is absolutely gorgeous. So give me a second, I'm gonna work on this, and then I'm gonna bring you down and show you this. The cells are really unique. So I'll be right back. All right, everyone, here is our beautiful painting for tonight. Um, and as you can see, the rose gold did show up, but I think I could have gone without the rose gold and it would have been just fine. Um, I do like the black accents. Black accents against the rouge are really pretty but I'm gonna bring you down and show you some of this crazy cell action that's been going on. So first in the, in the far right corner, we've got this whole cluster of just crazy cells with the black and the rouge, basically. Um, there's a little bit of the light magenta, but, and then here is the dioxinine purple. Isn't that crazy? It's so pretty. And then I'm gonna go along to this petal and while this petal got a little muted, some of the cells are really um, developing and looking really pretty. And then here is the crazy middle where I blew both directions. I love this little section. Look at that. It's so interesting. And I know people tell me that they see things in my paintings. I guess I'm so busy um, doing them that until someone points it out to me, I don't see the face or the frog or the turtle. Um, in the past I have, but now I've, I'm just so busy trying to get the paintings um, uh, finished for you so that you can see everything that's going on that I don't get a chance to really look for the little things anymore. I notice hearts and things like that, but rarely do I, do I notice the faces anymore. So if you see them, let me know. And also from you know my direction to your direction, you may see things in the painting that I can't see from this direction either. But I do love when people say, yeah, there's a face over in the left corner, or, you know, top or bottom or whatever. And so it's kind of it's kind of fun to, to play that game as well. But I love these colors. So the dioxinine purple, the rouge, the um, Payne's gray, and the light or the medium magenta looks so beautiful together. What I'm thinking is I might do another painting like this, but I'm gonna take out the rose gold and I'm either gonna take out the Payne's gray or I'm gonna take out the black. And then I'm gonna see how vibrant it, it ends up with that. So watch for that in the future. But my next um, painting is gonna start a series of, of five paintings that I'm gonna be doing. And it's going to be starting with cup pours for those of you um, that haven't tried cup pours or um, haven't seen any of my cup pours, I'm gonna do cup pours and then I'm gonna work my way from this little tiny one that I think is, um, I think it's an eight by 10, and then all the way up again to the 16 by 20. So watch for that series of five videos and um, they'll start with my next one in three days. All right, thank you all for joining me. Bye.